I am James Woods, a global affairs analyst with a specific interest on the African continent. I am also a strategic communications and media specialist. I am an alumni of the London School of Economics and Political Science, and I've also pursued further studies with the University of Oxford, Said Business School. Over the years, I have worked for and consulted for a number of reputable organizations dealing in areas such as shipping and finance, economics, mining, oil and gas, agribusiness, good governance, wildlife protection. And I hope this show will give you a little taste of the works I've been doing on global affairs. Thank you. Well, to assess Fidel Castro's impact on Africa and how he'll be remembered there, I'm joined now in the studio by the award-winning African affairs analyst, James Woods. Good to see you, James. Um, what have Africans been saying about the impact of Cuba under Fidel Castro now that the great man has passed? How are they remembering him? Well, um, I think um, Africa and um, Cuba hold a very special place together. Um, the reason for this goes back to the time of um, apartheid where Cuba was absolutely beneficial and important, was seminal to the fight to end apartheid. So most African countries hold this very dear to themselves. When the Western powers were still promoting, like Ronald Reagan, Margaret mm. Thatcher, were promoting the apartheid regime, there was Fidel Castro assisting them in the liberation movements in Angola, in Mozambique, um, actually helped with um, numerous other places, DRC. So I think that is very central to African system mm. memory that they hold, and the founding fathers of Africa Hold that, uh, hold that very dearly to themselves, that they were able to achieve success due to the support he gave both militarily, both in education, both in medical support, both in, in, in education and literacy levels, and also trying to ensure that the new states that would be formed had the right personnel in those, in, in those governments or such. And here with me to discuss this is African Affairs Analyst, James Wood. James, thank you very much. James Wood, thank you for coming in. Um, this is somewhat of a PR nightmare, isn't it, for the president? Um, absolutely. Um, I think um, for those of us who hold values of good governance and accountability with transparency, when you have a PR machinery that fails to relay where the head of state is, causes a lot of chaos within the country, because um, a head of state is put in a democratic nation, head of state is elected into office. So by being elected, they have to be accountable to those constituents. So having gone to the UN, um, the nation understood that this is um, official duties. But to have gone for an extra two weeks where nobody knew of his whereabouts caused a bit of a flux, as you've already mentioned. But now, the part of the PR job when you have your press secretary is your PR team. They're the ones who are supposed to relay why the head of state is um, extending his stay in the US. Is it a holiday? Is he seeking medical treatment? Are there meetings for investors? When this isn't relayed, this creates the rumors. And the rumor mill eventually becomes the truth if you're not telling people what's happening. That's um, an interesting question. What sort of person is believed to be? What we do know is that he is a rebel leader. Um, he's a leader who has had a vision or a belief that he is fighting for uh, multi-democracy in Uganda to bring the rights of people to the forefront, to oust um, Yoweri Museveni, to have people allowed to elect somebody. But as an individual, he says that he is fighting for this cause under the Ten Commandments, Biblical Ten Commandments, that he's following the spirit world and what God has advised him to do. But he is, along the way, has broken every single one of those Ten Commandments. Yes, because, of course, one corner of that picture that you painted there is is that some of his followers believe that he is a man with mystical qualities. I think this is something you will find in across Africa, having been born and raised in Africa, you find that specific leaders will put themselves to portray a specific power to instill an element of fear and authority over the followers. And the way he has done this is that he has escaped death numerous times, which has led to that belief to be further enhanced. We still live in a society where magic, science, and religion are still very much a dominant force. So he's utilized that aspect of religion and magic for the mysticism. And beyond that, if you look at the followers, a lot of these followers are people that are either being oppressed into following him, mm. so they follow him out of fear. And you can brainwash, a lot of these people are young people who can be brainwashed significantly to believe in what he says. Now joining me to discuss this is a global affairs analyst, James Woods. All right, James, thanks for joining in. It's a tough situation um, London is facing right now, um, thanks to the coronavirus. What do you make of this? Well, it's, it's a very difficult situation. I'm bearing in mind how the pandemic has impacted not only London, but the world generally with over a million deaths. And we're looking at London with a total death rate of 43,000, the UK, I should say, 43,000. Focusing on London, we're just looking at the past day where we had almost 20,000 cases. So the significance of this pandemic is really big. It's really affecting the, the way of life. So looking at this, uh, 
Britain, it's the government that's put in place, moving London from a medium level to a high level, absolutely this is going to have an impact on the way of life, lives for people. Um, those from low, um, low, um, low income households, those facing challenges, those on job losses, the youth in particular. So there's going to be very major challenges on that. Previous winners include the ex-Mozambique president Joachim Shisano and Festus Mugai, the former leader of Botswana. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined in the studio by the communications and PR specialist James Woods. A very good morning to you. And um, This is a lucrative prize. How much is it actually worth and why did the founder feel it was important to give ex-leaders that recognition? All right, well, um, the, the prize itself, this is um, one of the largest prizes um, in the world. Um, it's five million US dollars. Um, it's paid over 10 years. Um, and on top of that, after those 10 years, the leader also received $200,000 for life, um, a year for life. Now, um, it's, a, it's a great initiative, um, as we've mentioned, funded by Mo Ibrahim Telecommunications. Um, Guru um, brought mobile technology to Africa. Um, I remember being, being back home in Malawi using Celta, which is now Airtel, um, mm. founded by him. Now, the, the reason why he actually decided on the award was he swore, um, he, in Africa itself, um, I think um, if, if you look at how structures are run in Africa, it mainly goes down to governance. Whatever you do is related to governance. I think the final buck stops with governance, as we could say. So Mo Ibrahim saw this as an area whereby um, Africa was failing a lot of areas. Why not highlight those role models, the leaders who are actually performing wonders, doing great for their countries, um, lifting people out of poverty, right. um, creating sustainable economic development, um, um, advancing human rights, advancing democracy. Why not um, um, recognize those leaders and bring them to the rest of the world? Because um, we, we tend to hear about the negative sides of Africa. I'm joined by the award-winning African affairs analyst, James Woods. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. So in effect, President Trump has closed the border of the U.S. to refugees and immigrants from African countries like Somalia and Sudan for the next 90 days. Your reaction to that? I think it's, um, it's appalling. Um, number one, we're, we're living in such a globalized world where international cooperation is vital. And you talk about Sudan. Sudan has been assisting the United States in trying to get access to ISIS in Libya. So they've, they've gone into Sudan, gone to the Libyan border. So also recently, um, Barack Obama, just before he stepped down, had lifted part of the um, economic sanctions on Sudan, mm -hmm. showing that there's this improved relation. And then for this to happen, when Somalia, nor Sudan, nor Libya, which is actually the third country, mm -hmm. including the ban, have posed any significant threat to the United States of America. So it is appalling. I mean, looking at Somali refugees in Kenya, there was about 137 who were due to be flying to the United States of America and can't go. There's over 15,000 refugees from Somalia and Kenya who were left stranded by this decision. So it, it, is, it is quite worrying, as you rightfully mentioned, that um, you're looking at countries like Saudi Arabia, mm. um, Egypt, Turkey, who were involved in the attacks on the United States of America in 9-11. The Cato Institute released, um, uh, released some information that from 1975 until 2015, zero Americans were killed in a terrorist act by these nations that have been mentioned in the ban. Well now, my next guest has just returned from South Africa after being recognized as the Young African Achiever of the Year. The awards drew participants from over 36 African countries. Malawian James Woods was honored for his continued work and outstanding work championing initiatives to develop Africa. And James is with me now in the studio. James, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. So what exactly were you nominated for and what were you recognized for in these awards? Well, um, firstly, um, it's an honor to be nominated. Um, you're not really told who's nominated you and for what they've nominated you, but um, on top of my head, um, for the initiatives I'm involved in, um, I work um, heavily, I worked heavily on the flooding issues that occurred in Malawi um, in January this year. So I was able to amass quite a lot of support internationally and um, locally. Um, I was also one of the first people to break the news um, internationally. I also work on um, illegal ivory um, trading issues. Um, so I've worked with organizations here in the UK. So I'm one organization, Stop Ivory, another organization, um, the Giants Club. So we've worked um, in trying to promote the, um, the curbing of illegal ivory, the burning of um, ivory, um, elephant protection initiatives. And um, also beyond that, um, as a young person under um, 30 and the, under the age of 30, I've worked with numerous African governments on communication strategies. So I'd assume that I'd be nominated um, in accordance to those. Well, let's get more on this now from the award-winning African affairs analyst, James Wood. Uh, thanks very much indeed, James, for coming in. President Dos Santos, as you heard there, has said similar things in the past. Is he serious this time? Are Angolans beginning to look to life after what some say is his autocratic rule? Well, um, first of all, um, I think for the Angolans who want him out, you'd hope that that is the case. But we have seen over the past 15 years where he's announced on several occasions that he is standing down only to run for election again and win. Um, the MPL is a very powerful um, political party. 
Um, he is seen as the individual who took Angola out of civil war to prosperity, as if you want to call it that, to the development that is happening. So to, to look at whether he's really going to hold to his word, I think there's a couple dynamics to really focus on. And these dynamics range from how the um, economy is currently doing. Mm. Some individuals have mentioned that um, it could be the case that he is feeling the pressure that the economy is suffering. The country is not moving in the direction it should be. It's Absolutely. a heavily reliant um, country on oil. And as you can see, the oil prices have slumped um, significantly. Um, for example, um, in 2014, the oil revenues amounted to $60 billion. Mm. 20, um, 2015, that was 30, $34 billion. A massive slump in actually the value of oil um, and what, what they're actually generating.